Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel F1 Error Analysis. Today we're going to talk about the second piece of the puzzle. Yes, your cover letter. Your cover letter is your opportunity to express your objective, enthusiasm and motivation to the F1 team. And in an extremely competitive job environment, your cover letter might be the factor that either makes it or breaks it. So let's dive into it then. So the way we are going to do it today is we're going to go over some of the factors that I've picked up from the Harvard Business Review article, which kind of jots down the key qualities of an enthusiastic and engaging and a professional cover letter. And we'll try and go into my cover letter to see where I can improve and what are already the positive factors of my cover letter. So let's get into it then. So the first factor is research first. Basically, read the job description really well to kind of identify keywords that are used so that you can then use them in your cover letter, very similar to the CV that I explained in the previous video. And then try and understand what are the culture and the values of the organization. Because if you're able to mention the culture and the values in your cover letter, then that will kind of catch the eye of the HR. The second factor is focus on the future. A lot of us try to spend time telling the HR what we've done in the past and what our skill sets are. But what is really important is your cover letter should almost act like a bridge between your previous experiences and your skill sets and what can you do with it in the future with the role in that company. So HRs really look for this if the candidate has a vision with that position. The third is open strong. An HR is not going to read your entire cover letter if the first paragraph is boring and uninspiring. The first paragraph, if personalized, is even better because nothing can beat a personal story. The fourth quality is personal values. Are you able to communicate your personal values through your cover letter? That is extremely important because the way you communicate how you are a problem solver, how you are a doer, how is your ability to think grown over the past couple of years are key elements in the way your HR is going to read your cover letter and try and understand what kind of a candidate you are. The fourth one is short and formatted. Keep it short, nothing more than one page and also as far as possible, try to keep it formal. And the last and the most important and the most underrated quality is get your cover letter reviewed and ask for specific feedback. Whenever I made my cover letter for my university or for my applications, I would always give it to my best friends or people from the industry and I would ask them specific questions like, when you read this cover letter, do you feel that I am an inspired candidate? Do you think I deserve to get the job? Uh, to get the job? And if you were the hiring manager, would you hire me? These are extremely important questions that you need to ask and get feedback upon because if your friend is not going to hire you, the hiring manager is definitely not going to hire you. So keep the six factors in mind and now let's dive into my cover letter and see which factors are present and not present. So as you can see, I've kind of taken a extremely formal cover letter. Uh, it was a template that I got from the internet. I'm sure you guys can find one too. And I say, um, dear, dear hiring manager, I've had the desire to be part of Red Bull Formula One team student placement program ever since I started my master of racing car design. This cover letter envelops my motivation and my experience for applying to the aerodynamic analysis student placement position of the program. Back then, I had multiple cover letters for multiple positions and this was just one of the positions that I was applying for. And you see how I start quite strongly um, by saying that I've had the desire to be part of the Red Bull F1 team student placement program ever since I started my master. So it's not a conventional start. But hey, I've gotten even better over the next paragraph because now here comes a personalized story. It's 2011, the second year of Red Bull dominance at the pinnacle of motorsport as Alonso and Weber scream past Arush all the way up to Redillian 
at Spa. You know, all the F1 fans know this moment because it's just one of the historic moments in Formula 1. Weber passes Alonso mercilessly around the outside and I wonder how can those cars possibly clock 190 miles an hour through those corners? Nine years ago, age 16, in the smallest state of India, renowned as Goa, curiosity drove me to learn the word aerodynamics. So this is where I kind of tell the HR my personalized inspiration, where it comes from. And I've also used the word curiosity. And basically this silently tells the HR in the background that I'm curious by nature and that's what's gotten me forward, you know. Ever since I have dared to dream, evolving myself both technically and mentally with my commitment and diligence, orienting my academics and career as presented in my resume to leave a footprint in Formula 1. Now here are two key takeaways with this couple of lines. A. I sound like a person who knows what it takes to kind of get into a role into Formula 1. And B. I've told him or her that I am not going to talk about my resume anymore. You know, she knows going forward that I'll not be repeating information that I've put down in my resume. I've already referenced it now. And then comes the big boy, the why. The continuous evolution of the problem statement, stimulating aero challenges, attention to detail and the pure rush of racing flows adrenaline through my veins, captivating every single cell in my body. And here is my why. And your why is really important. And that's the reason it's highlighted. Because the moment the HR reads your why, she should be like, yeah, let's push him to the next round. Now I'm going to summarize in the next paragraph a little bit of my professional experience and how that has helped me to develop my skill sets and my personality. So let's dive into it. Bell Flight took me on board after completing my Bachelor of Aerospace Engineering. Via participation in flight test programs, I laid down my foundations in interpreting data and developing tools and methodologies. My active participation reinforced my capability of working independently with minimal supervision, promoting myself to aerodynamics and performance engineer for the Bell 525 helicopter. Being thoughtful and curious with my team involved me in aero research projects such as rotor hub flow characterization. Now, here is where I kind of get into the details of what projects kind of give me what kind of skill sets and what kind of qualities and how being thoughtful and curious, which is a part of my personality now, has allowed me to be involved in aero research projects. And this kind of tells the HR that, okay, he's a good, you know, he goes and gets what he wants. He's a doer. He doesn't sit back and wait for people to tell them what to do, which is like really key attributes that um, HRs look for. And now I'm going to kind of dive into my university experience quickly and my master's experience. And I go saying that through my passion for aerodynamics, I enjoyed exploring my creativity in leadership positions at the university Aero SAE and Formula SAE teams in my bachelor's and master's respectively. Teamwork taught me honest communication, collaboratively finding solutions to problems and treating defeat as an opportunity to learn. And over here, this is a key takeaway because I'm telling them that I've worked in teams before. I know what it takes and I know how to be able to effectively deliver with a team. And that is really what HRs look for, you know. My CFD, wind tunnel and trackside experience with Dallara helped me grow my motorsport engineering judgment and reflective nature required to understand and solve a problem quickly. You know, at this point, what I'm trying to communicate is, yes, you know, we are all detail oriented. I've worked on this lovely projects that is, you know, high highlighted in my CV, but going through the track side experience and the wind tunnel experience has allowed me to kind of have a holistic picture and look at the bigger picture while I'm problem solving, because a lot of us can get lost into the details and lose vision of the bigger picture quite quickly in Formula 1. And this is a key attribute and I'm trying to communicate this to the HR. And here's the key because in the next paragraph, I'm going to talk about my vision and why I am a suitable candidate or maybe the perfect candidate for the role that she is looking for. With the rules of 2022 coming, I feel like that kid nine years ago, eager to learn and grow with Red Bull Racing. 
the team's ambition and racing culture is truly aspiring to be part of and here i've kind of again uh, spoken about the values and the culture of the team and it kind of immediately lights you up doesn't it with my can do attitude and flexibility i intend to provide my 10th of a second to the team man the moment you write my 10th of a second to the team that would immediately light up the eyes of the hr you know in mind if i was the hr i would be like this guy deserves an opportunity constantly improvising to reach the teams and my full potential my aim is to realize the art of directing and guiding airflow around an car and around an f1 car and to gain the skill of accurately correlating simulation data with wind tunnel and track side data now over here i think i've gone a bit overboard <laughs> with what my objective is but but hey like yeah, you know some people can like it and some people won't like one of the things that i would definitely change in this in the last statement is accurately correlating simulation data with wind tunnel and track side data bro come on you can't write accurately correlating in the same sentence right you can probably say something like gain the skill or the philosophy or the uh, the flow chart or the flow processes you know of correlating simulation data with wind tunnel and track side data because it ain't that accurate is it i can tell you it isn't um and then i go thank you for considering my application wishing you resilience health and happiness now this is a really important line even though it's just a small little line it tells you a lot about me because it tells you i'm very personal in my engagement in my way of communication because it was a time of covid and what i'm saying is that i wish you resilience i wish you health and i wish you happiness because it we were all going through tough times back then and if my entire application has not made an impression on the person who's reading it i'm definitely sure in those times this last line would now i'm not trying to say that this this is a hack for the cover letters you know what is important is you should be able to effectively communicate your struggle your hard work your experience um intelligently to the other person and not you know not let poor phrasing of words undermine your skill set or your experience that you've gone through to kind of apply for this position because out of 10000 applications there are two or three people who get selected for the aero development role and if you want to be one of them then you need to make sure that you need to prepare your cover letter and your cv in the best possible way because everyone's going to read this at the end of the day and trust me people at red bull take both of these quite seriously they go through it and they go through it in detail So this is my attempt of taking a Harvard Business Review article which kind of highlights the qualities of a good cover letter and checking if my cover letter has those qualities in it. This was the cover letter that I used for the application of my student placement. So it went through. So it isn't that bad hopefully. Um you can find the link in the description below. for this article so that you guys can go through it in detail yourself if you haven't had a look of me reviewing my own resume or cv that i used for my student placement program do check it out it's in the same playlist and if you've liked this video give me a like and in general if you are looking forward to content related to f1 careers f1 aerodynamics and me reviewing reviewing the f1 weekends do give me a subscribe i'm shubh and you're watching F1 aerodynamicist